football ignites my soul. It's what makes me go. This is what I do. I'm not here to play. I'm here to build a program. It's a new year for Arizona State football, the era of Herm Edwards. Welcome on into Sun Devil Stadium, everybody. For the house, I'm Blaine McCormick, joined along by Scotty Gange and Austin Burnett. We're talking about everything Arizona State football before their first game. So I got to ask you, Scotty, Herm Edwards, he's coming into Tempe on a thunderstorm. What are you expecting out of him this season, and what has he brought to the Sun Devil staff? To say the very least, Blaine, so far it's been a roller coaster in the Herm era. In December, he comes in. It was almost a joke, the national media. You know, everybody was, how can Herm come over decades away from college football? But since then, in the nine months he's been here, he has brought some respect to the program. ESPN, Fox Sports, national outlets have come to cover him and the Sun Devils, and he has earned the respect of the players and I think the fans. And so I can't really assure you what's going to happen come this next Saturday, the Saturday after that. But for sure, I can assure you that there's going to be lots of happy fans and excited fans anticipated for Herm Edwards' era. It's going to be really exciting. You mentioned the word anticipated. And one thing about this Sun Devil team is the defense and the big expectations for them after a pretty mediocre season last year. Austin, what are you looking for out of the defense this year? And who are some guys that fans can really look out for? Well, they pretty much clean staff on the coaching staff on the defensive side. They added Antonio Pierce for the linebackers and Sean Noah. He comes over from Navy, so there's going to be a few changes on the defensive side, but this defense is going to be led by Rennell Wren and J.J. Wilson also making the change from tight end to linebacker. So it's going to be very interesting to see how ASU can change this year's defense. Now shifting the conversation from defense to offense, Nikhil Harry and Manny Wilkins, two of the most talked about players on this team. What is their ceiling? So I, I'd say Nikhil Harry's ceiling is, is sky high for him this season. And the, the biggest thing I took away from Pac-12 Media Day a, a, a few weeks ago was how much respect and fear he owns in the Pac-12. Several defensive backs around the conference were saying how either excited they are or not excited they are to play him being one of the best receivers in the Pac-12. So his ceiling, it's got to be first team all Pac-12 first team All-American and I think that if he can play to his full potential all year long then we could possibly see one of the best single season at, at wide receiver at Arizona State University. You mentioned his accolades and being selected as an AP preseason All-American on the second team. That's pretty good for your resume I would say. For sure. Lots of lots of uh, preseason watch lists and all that too. Right. Especially with this coaching staff too. Austin you mentioned Antonio Pierce and you mentioned the cleaning house for this Sun Devil team. What are some other coaches that you're looking to to really improve this year? Well, I mean, Rob Likens, he's going to lead the offense this year, and I think the main part of this ASU team is going to rely solely on Herm Edwards. He's going to have to lead this team, and I think one of the biggest aspects of Herm's game right now is the motivation. This guy can motivate anybody. He can motivate a man in a graveyard. So, um, But in, in, in all seriousness, no, this ASU football team is going to be very interesting to see how they can develop. You mentioned Manny Wilkins and Nikhil Hare. We're going to see how they connect early on in the season and how they progress throughout the season. Well, Austin, you mentioned all the additions to the coaching staff, but there's also been some additions here at Sun Devil Stadium. And to inform us on that is going to be our own Joran Palacio. Joran, what do you got for us? Thanks, Blaine. That's right. Now, one of the biggest storylines surrounding the Sun Devils for the past few seasons have been the construction and renovations going on with Sun Devil Stadium. And we are here right now on the up upper concourse, as you can see, on the southeast side of the stadium, way up top here. And as you can see behind me, we are kind of in the construction zone right now. Now, some of the changes that have been made before right now is that the video board that has been installed here, the huge video board, is one of the biggest in upgrades in the stadium renovations as well as the football facility on the north side of the stadium considered state of the art amongst all the big colleges as well but what is happening right now well we're going to tell you the east side of the stadium has been completely rebuilt from the ground up which also includes a 400 level which the west side does not because of the press box situated 
over there. That 400 level this season is going to include a 5,000 square foot beer garden that will be open in time for the season. There are some changes to be made in the 2019 year just because they can't get it ready in time for this season. Those changes are going to include the beer garden being air conditioned. And so while the club space is up here, they will also be air conditioned as well. Some of the other changes to the stadium this year, the Inferno, the student section is no longer the double Inferno. They are all reuniting in the south end zone, which opens the north end zone for some general seating as well this year. Policy wise, there is a new no re-entry policy as well. So if you leave the stadium, you're booted out for the entirety of the night. The stadium changes it started in back in 2014 with the preliminary phases. The final major phase is underway right, right now in 2018, and it's going to be all wrapped up in 2019. But for right now, they're working to make sure it's in time. Everything's in time for UTSA's kickoff on September 1st. But until then, they're trying to get it done. We're going to send it back down to Blaine and the rest of the guys. Guys, take it away. All right, now it's time for our emoji flash game. A new one here at House of Sparky. Basically, Austin and I are going to take the roles of some Sun Devil football players, fans, and coaches. And so, Austin, I'm going to go to you first. You're Herm Edwards. ASU was picked to finish last in the Pac-12 South. What emoji best represents your reaction? Well, I want to go with the questionable emoji. First off, I have 75% of my returning starters coming back. I have Nikhil Harry, Manny Wilkins, Eno Benjamin. I have uh, Rennell Wren and Chase Lucas on defense. I have a lot of really good guys coming back for me, so I'm really questioning why I was picked to finish last in the Pac-12 South. All right, now, Scott, I'm going to toss it back over to you. Nikhil Harry wasn't even picked to as a top 50 player in ESPN's top 50. Uh, what's your emoji to describe that? All right, if I'm Nikhil Harry, then I am the sleeping emoji. I, I, I'm just sleeping on this one. I don't care that I was not picked to finish, or not in the top 50 in ESPN's top 50. I, I, I've been nominated to several preseason watch lists. I'm a stud, one of the best receivers in the Pac-12. I'm not gonna let it phase me. Some fans might be mad. My teammates could be angry, but this isn't gonna get in the way of my game. So now I'm gonna toss it over to you. You're Manny Wilkins, heading into your final fifth year season at Arizona State. What emoji is going to represent your entire season as a whole here? All right, I got, I got the smirking devil because this is my senior year. I'm going to try and get this, not only this senior class, but this entire team as a whole, uh, not only a winning record, but into a really good bowl game. Um, I, I think I'm very overlooked, I, but I'm not going to let that affect me this season. I'm going to do my own thing, keep stay humble, and I'm, going to, I'm just going to ball out my senior year. All right, Scotty. Toss it back over to you. You're an Arizona State fan coming into the season. It was a little rocky road when Herm first came in. What's your emoji? All right, well, Herm, of course, came in with outrage, confusion, shock. He brought a storm to Tempe. But if I'm an Arizona State fan now, then I'm rocking the shades. I'm feeling relaxed. Herm has gained some, some national attention, earned respect. And I'll tell you one thing, if I'm an Arizona State fan, especially from this past December, I'm feeling good. I'm excited for the season. But most of all, I'm just sitting back in my chair, feeling relaxed and ready for the season. All right, well, that'll do it for the emoji flash. We're going to send it back over to Blaine for the feel-good story of the week. We're all smiles here at HouseOfSparky.com, and that's why we do our feel-good story of the week. And before the season even started, Nikhil Harry was already selected as an AP preseason second team All-American, and rightfully so. The guy had over 1,000 receiving yards, eight touchdowns, and so many other accomplishments in his sophomore season here at ASU. You gotta love the guy too. A local guy from Chandler, Arizona, was raised by his grandmother and has already impressed fans here in Tempe. He's like a tectonic plate, just bulldozes through defenders and always comes out on top. And I can tell you this with confidence, you are witnessing one of the best wide receivers to step foot on Frank Cush Field. Possibly a first round draft pick along with the class of Demarius Randall, Terrell Suggs, maybe you've heard of them. So definitely come to Sun Devil Stadium to watch this guy. Because like the North American plate, he will make a lot of mountainous records here at Arizona State and impress so many fans. That's why Nikhil Harry is our preseason feel good story of the week. Well, now that we're all three back together, we like to look ahead to the future schedule and kind of have a crystal ball segment for this one. So we're looking at the schedule breakdown this year. We'll start with Washington. Big upset win for the Sun Devils last year here in Tempe. How are they looking this year, Austin? Well, this was a, another big win by the ASU Sun Devils last year when the Huskies came to town. Now, this is the first time the ASU beat a top five ranked team since they knocked off number one overall Nebraska in 1996. Um, but the Sun Devils did have a little help from the, uh, from the Huskies kicking game. Kicker Van Zoderberg, uh, he missed two field goals inside the 20 yard line. He had one that went wide right and they had another one that hit off of the right goal post. Um, but the Sun Devils also, were also led by 
defensive lineman Rennell Wren. Uh, as, a, as a defensive unit as a whole, they had five sacks. Um, and also, if Manny Wilkins and Nikhil Harry are able to get the ball going early and often this year, in, in this game specifically, and if they get the ball to Eno Benjamin, if he gets 100 plus yards in this game, I think the Sun Devils will come out with a win. Now, sticking with the theme of Pac 12 football, there's a historically great team with USC. Obviously, last year didn't work out in the Sun Devils' favor, and they have to go to the Coliseum this year. So, yeah, of course, last year, Blaine. I say if Arizona State beats USC, Todd Graham's still the coach, they make their way to the Pac-12 championship game and we see what happens from there. But they got blown out here in Tempe, so they're going to have to take on the task of going to the Coliseum, as you said, playing a top-ranked team in the Pac-12 with USC. And the big guys that you really have to be afraid of there is Cam Smith and Porter Gustin. Those two guys are going to be in the box all night long, and I think they're going to give Eno Benjamin, Trelon Smith, and the entire running back core a really tough time. So the key for the Sun Devils to take that game uh, in the late October matchup is going to be Manny Wilkins and Nikhil Harry, pretty much the key in every single game. They've got, USC has a quarterback battle right now. JT Parrott came out of high school. He should be a senior this year. He might be the QB, so I think if the defense can get to him early and often, then, the, then uh, the Sun Devils will have a good time against the Trojans. It's always tough to face them, especially on the road in Los Angeles. One game that I want to point out is against Michigan State, and this game is at home here in Tempe against a historically great program from Lansing, Michigan. They finished the year 10-3 and last year with a seventh-ranked defense. That is huge, especially in the Big Ten where they've been competing, and they're coming in Tempe. Then the Sun Devils are going there next year over up to Michigan. But that's going to be our schedule breakdown segment. We're going to send it over to Julian Potas to tell about us about some newcomers that have really stood out in practice. The Sun Devils competed at a high level last year, but it's fair to say they lost a sense of identity halfway through their previous season. They won majority of their games, but struggled to compete in high-key matchups against teams where they could have been considered competition in a tough Pac-12 conference. Now, it's 2018, and the bar is set high, but there's a lot of new faces and a whole lot of opportunity. Among these newcomers on this roster is Brendan Ayuk, a wide receiver who played two years at Sierra Junior College. During his time at Sierra, Ayuk racked up 2,500 total yards and recorded 21 touchdowns. Now, the incoming junior is going to make his mark in Division I football. Merlin Robinson is another promising young freshman talent at the linebacker position. The linebacker was a consensus four-star recruit and was ranked top five by ESPN as an inside linebacker in the nation. Now, there's a lot of young talent on this team, but the most notable of these newcomers is the head coach himself, Herm Edwards. Edwards was drafted by, in the NFL back in 1977, played 10 years in the league, Coach for two NFL teams, and after retirement, he worked as an NFL analyst for NFL Network before accepting the head coaching position here at Arizona State. So it's fair to say, Herm knows what he's doing. Now, the Sun Devils will look to make their mark in the Pac-12 Conference. The Sun Devils begin their, their start on September 1st against UTSA. It is then that we will see what this Sun Devil squad brings to the table for 2018. Thanks so much, Julian. Definitely look for those guys on the gridiron in day one. Now, the UTSA Roadrunners are coming to Tempe for game one of the college football season. And this offense for the Sun Devils is going to go out firing like they usually do, especially with Manny Wilkins. What are you expecting from him and the offense overall? Well, this offense needs to strike first. UTSA is coming in top 10 in the NCAA in pass D, scoring D, red zone D, and total defense, one of only two teams in the NCAA to conquer that feat with Wisconsin. So for Manny Wilkins and the Sun Devils, They've just got to come out, rock, and get the, get the fans here at Sun Devil Stadium into it and get some deep balls and points early, I'd say. You mentioned the word rocking, and Herm Edwards has been rocking press conferences, media sessions, got a few documentaries shot of him from ESPN. How is he going to be on the sidelines? Well, I expect him to be very aggressive in this first game. I, I say if it's down to a fourth and one, fourth and two, anything under a fourth and five, I ex fully expect him to go for it. You know, UTSA isn't really a high caliber team. Um, so I, I, I would say, you know what, why not take those chances? Go for it on fourth and two. Get this Sun Devil team fired up. Give them something to look forward to for the rest of the season. Show them you are here to mean business and show them that there's a promise in the Sun Devil football program. Arizona State did play against the Roadrunners in, in two years ago and won that game in San Antonio. So I got to ask you guys, score predictions from week one. Austin, we'll start with you. Well, I do think this is going to be a very nervous start. It may be um, tied early on. It might be ve even very close early on, but I do plan on the Sun Devils pulling away in the very end. My final score, 38-17 Sun Devils. And Scotty? 
Yeah, I'm going to go that this is has to be a must-win game for ASU. I, I think that it's one of the only for sure games that they are favorites in, especially in the tough schedule they have this year. So I think a three win or a three score win for them is going to be um, an assurement. So I, I'm going to go 24 to 7 Sun Devils. So yours is a little low. Yours is pretty high. I'm going to stick with the high theme. A lot of passing yards in this game. I'm going to go 42 to 21 in favor of the Sun Devils as well. That week one start is so important to win. We'll see if the fans here at Sun Devil Stadium are treated to that. Well, that's our show for tonight from Sun Devil Stadium. I'd like to thank you for joining us here on The House on HouseOfSparky.com. For our producer, Noah Lau, Austin Burnett, Scotty Gange, I'm Blaine McCormick, and we'll see you next week. Sun Devils taking on the Roadrunners. We're out here about to get this money, okay? Uh, it's game week, UTSA getting ready. About to do this. Oh, I'm out of here. George got it. Bye, guys.